What do we mean? And what do we comprehend when we talk about piety, piousness, or the fear of Allah? The fear of Allah is what and how is it going to be rewarded? Allah says in Surah Rahman, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ This is what the fear of Allah means. And this verse actually tells what the fear of Allah will be rewarded with. I repeat and recite again, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ For the person who fears standing in front of Allah, the person who, who fears standing in the court of Allah on the day of judgment, he will be rewarded with two gardens in Jannah. Standing in front of Allah. Standing in front in the court of Allah, the fear of that is actually taqwa. And why standing? Being asked, being questioned, Having, having accountability, standing there will be like what? Allah will say, You've come, oh my bondsman, you've come all by yourself? You've come all alone, all by yourself? The way I created you, the way you came to the world when you were, birth, when you were given birth to, when you were born, all by ourselves, alone, alone in front in the coat of Allah, and Allah on His throne, with no, with no curtain in between, with no interpreter, just the bondsman, just the person in Allah, and Prophet ﷺ says that nobody. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reposed in Bukhari that Prophet sallallahu said that nobody on the day of judgment will be able to move an inch. Nobody will be able to budge an inch until and unless he answers three questions. <coughs> he, answers, he answers five questions. The five questions are How did you spend your youth? How did you spend your youth when you were young? You had all the strength, the power, the memory, the free time, the help, the support of your parents, your siblings, and all the time in the world and all the memory and strength and power in the world. How did you spend your youth? What did you see? What did you hear? What did you wear? How did you talk and how did you walk? How did you make fun of people? How did you relate with the opposite sex? When you had all the bounties in the world and you went all the time in the world, how did you spend your youth? That would be the first question of Allah. Then, Okay, fine. In youth, in youth, you, you, you can't, there were times when you could not control your desires, you could not resist the temptations of the world. Then you did not even have the proper knowledge, you lacked the knowledge of Quran and Hadith. You did not even have the experience of the world. You did not even, you had not even gained the experiences of the life. Okay, fine. Then the second question would be, how did you spend the rest of your life? Some were given 80, some were given 90, some allotted 95 years in the world. How did you spend the rest of your life? Did you, did you repent? Did you convince, did you convince, confess your sins? Did you cry to seek forgiveness? To err was human, but did you try? Did you try to correct yourself? The third question: How did you earn? 
How did you earn your wealth, your riches, your earnings? Were they lawful? Were they halal? Did you refrain from unlawful forbidden, forbidden earnings? The fourth question, how did you spend your lawful earnings? How did you spend your riches, your wealth, your gold, your money? Showing off? Boasting off? Wastefully? Miserly? Against or according to the limits of Allah? On forbidden things? How did you spend your money would be the first qu fourth question. And the fifth, the last but not the least would be the knowledge. The knowledge you were given, you were blessed with. How much did you act according to it? What you learned, what you were taught, what you read, what you listened, what you knew about the about the commandments of Quran, about the teachings, what the Prophet taught and brought, when you got to know all that, how much did you act upon them? Allahumma anfa'na bima'allamtana wa'allimna ma yanfa'una wa zidna ilma. Rabbi zidna ilma. Allahumma faqihna fiddin. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilma nafian. Rizqan tuayyiban wa amalam mutakabbala. So this is the fear, the fear to answer these questions and the fear not being able to budge an inch before answering these questions. How we've spent our youth, how are we spending our life, how are we earning, how are we spending and how are we acting about our deeds about our sins. The fear of Allah is this. The fear of Allah is what? The fear of his accountability. The fear of his punishments. The fear of his wrath. The fear of his hell. The fear of his hellfire. The fear of being deprived of Jannah. The fear of the displayer of Allah. This is actually piety. This is actually fear of Allah. And this is what a muttaqi fears of. Allah here is saying the fear of Allah is better for them. Yes, piety, fear of Allah, taqwa is, is better for all of us. Allah says, Allah announces, Allah promises, Inna Allah yuhibbul muttaqeen. There is absolutely no doubt, for sure, verily, Allah will love the pious. Allah will love those who have piety and those who fear Allah. They will be the beloved people of Allah who are the pious and who fear Allah. Then Allah says, Inna Allah ma'al muttaqeen. Verily, there's no doubt that Allah will be with all the people who fear Allah. Allah will be with them for help, for support, for sustenance, for protection, for guidance, for his pleasure, for his bounties. Allah will be with them. Then Allah promises in Quran, Inna al muttaqeena mafaza. There is absolutely no doubt. Rest for a sure. There is absolutely no doubt that all the muttaqeen are, the, are going to be successful. All the God-fearing, all the pious and all of those who have piety of Allah, they are going to be successful where? Here and hereafter. Then Allah says, Wal aqibatul muttaqeen. Then Allah says in Surah, in Surah, Tulbakara, immediately starting verses of Surah Tulbakara, Allah says, This Quran is what? La Raiba fi Hudalil Muttaqeen. There is absolutely no doubt about this. Don't doubt in this Quran. Don't doubt in this holy book of Allah. And if you don't doubt in this, and if you are pious, and if you are God fearing, then this book will be a source of guidance 
to all not this book of guidance this quran will be a source of guidance only and only to those who are god fearing we can be allah's beloved if we are god fearing we will we will have the support of allah and allah will be with us if we are god fearing we will be of the successful people and we will we will be guided to the straight path if we are god fearing Allah says in Surah Al Imran, "Sari wila janna, sari wila maghfirat min Rabbikum min jannatin arzuha samawati wal ard uiddat lil muttaqin." Proceed, proceed, go fast towards the forgiveness of Allah and toward His Jannah, which is how wide it is, as wide it is, as broad as the earth and as the heavens. and it has been specifically and specially entirely prepared for whom uiddat lil muttaqin it has been prepared in advance nuzulum mir rabbil alamin nuzulum is a hospitality which is prepared by the host before the guest comes so janna has been prepared for the muttaqin before they will they they will enter the janna So this is taqwa and this is what Allah promises for all the muttaqin Where does taqwa reside in our body In Bukhari it is reported that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked where is taqwa and he said he was pointing the narrator said that he was pointing towards his heart <coughs> The narrator says that he was pointing towards his heart and he was saying taqwa ha huna taqwa ha huna taqwa ha huna the taqwa is in the heart the taqwa is in the heart the taqwa is in the heart of the believer and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has warned us as reported in bukhari that there is a part of the body there's an organ in the body that if this stays well and this stays in a good state and the whole body stays well and the whole body is in a good state in a state of virtue but if this organ and part of the body goes bad it goes evil it becomes wretched the whole body becomes wretched the whole body becomes evil the whole all the parts of the body go and start committing evil deeds i warn you that part of the body is the heart it is the soul Remember fear of Allah and piety is a state of mind it is a condition of the heart and that is why Allah orders Allah orders in surah al imran ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi fear Allah as it is the right of Allah to be feared from him <coughs> fear allah this is an order of allah fear allah the way it is the right of allah to be feared for him what is the right of taqwa that the fear of allah be above all forms of worldly fears the fear of allah be more than and on top of all the fears of the world it means what let's all ask ourselves the few questions to to see and to analyze whether we fear allah like hakka tuqatihi the fear of displeasing the flare of the displayer of allah should be more and it should exceed the fear that our children our spouse or our family would would be unhappy or they would not be pleased the fear of being questioned the fear of being questioned or being interrogated by our 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 friends that is what we generally call as the peer pressure what 
what will i answer when my friends ask me that why have i started covering my face why have i started covering my face with a veil how will i answer my friends what answer will i have to my society or to my clan or to my family or to my tribe when i when i just let my daughter go after marriage without a dowry how will i answer the questions of the society the fear of the questions of the people around us becomes more than the fears of the accountability and of the questions of allah the desire to please allah should be the most than the desire to please the people around us our relatives our kinsmen so this is haqqatu qatihi how allah actually thinks this haqqatu qatihi is important what the bondsman is that the person who is most esteemed in the sight of allah is the person who has taqwa in heart as allah says as allah says in quran inna akramakum indallahi atqakum inna akramakum indallahi atqakum the best of you in the sight of allah is one who is most pious and who is most god fearing and that is what prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has also been reported to say prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said hazrat abu zar ghafari radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in musnad ahmad the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you as a person enjoy no superiority over a white skinned or a black skinned man you can of course be excellent through piety and the fear of allah and similarly it is reported by hazrat maaz radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu in musnad ahmad the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that much closer and dearer to me are the bondsmen who fear allah whoever they are wherever they are so whoever a person is wherever he is to whichever clan to whichever tribe to which color to whichever creed a person belongs is not important in the eyes of allah and in the eyes and the heart of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the person who is closer who is dearer who is superior who is more honored is the person who has more piety who has more fear of allah who is more god fearing